Hello, and welcome to our midweek study here in our series, Dinner with Jesus. This is uh, lesson number four, and uh, so I encourage you to catch up on those. If you've uh, missed any of them, they're in a playlist here on our YouTube channel. And uh, we're also studying these same passages in some greater detail on Sunday morning. So join us at 10.30 a.m. for our series, Dinner with Jesus. Uh, Tonight, I want to get some wheels turning in your mind uh, as we look forward to Sunday morning. Uh, some things to think about, and uh, we'll expand upon these thoughts. Uh, Tonight we're looking at Luke chapter 14, and specifically the first seven verses. Let me pull that up and read those with you here uh, in our study. It says in verse number one of Luke chapter 14, It came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fallen into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them. All right, that might seem like a strange place to cut off there, but uh, again, we'll look at this passage more fully on Sunday, but I uh, want to encourage you um, to kind of see a contrast here and uh, what Jesus did versus what these other invited guests did. Um, what we see here in this passage, very interesting, is that uh, Jesus is placed in, in a position, a situation where people are watching him and looking to find fault with him, uh, but he does not rise to their desires. Uh, he does what God has called him to do. He does um, what he always does here in these dinners and meets uh, the needs of those around him. So I, I think as we look at this passage, we should ask this question, who is in front of you? Who is in front of me, right? Uh, Luke draws our attention to this. He says, behold, right? Behold. It, it's, it's interesting, this man that appears before Jesus, all of a sudden, out of nowhere seemingly, this man with this terrible disease is in front of Jesus. Uh, this was not someone who was an invited guest. This is not someone who is given a place around the table, a place like Jesus was given, uh, or one of the other Pharisees. This is someone who's not really invited to the dinner, but he's placed in front of Jesus in order to create a situation where the Pharisees and the scribes could criticize him, right? So who is in front of you? Again, the question is not how did they get there, right? Uh, The question isn't what their motives are. The question isn't how can they help me. The question isn't, you know, what events transpired here, but who is in front of me? Uh, The Pharisees have schemed to put Jesus in an awkward position, and they are watching him. They're waiting to see if he will heal uh, without any comment. If he did, they were going to criticize him because he worked on the Sabbath day. Isn't that that amazing? They, They would criticize someone who saved life on the Sabbath day because he didn't wait until Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right? And so the Pharisees schemed to put Jesus in this position and, and again, this, this whole scene isn't to say we don't serve the Pharisees and minister to the Pharisees and that Jesus didn't have obligations there. Of course he did. He loved uh, all of these people and desired to draw them into God's kingdom. So even thinking about the Pharisees and how they jockeyed for position uh, around this table and how they wanted the position of honor, um, you know, how, who's in front of you? Not, again, how did they get there, but who's in front of you? It could be that one of the Pharisees that you ended up sitting next to had pushed you down a little further so that you weren't in a place of honor and he was in a place of honor. The point here isn't to choose one group to love or another, to identify people who are worthy of our love or uh, one group that God would want us to love. God desires for us to show the love of Christ to anyone that he's placed in front of us, but we have to have our eyes open to the needs around us. And so, who's in front of you? Not how did they get there, but what do they need? And so Jesus asks this question to um, really show the Pharisees and these scribes how absurd what they had done looked. And he asks them, 
you know, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Is it lawful to do good, right? Um, he's asked that question in those terms in other places in the gospel. So not only is it lawful to heal, but is, lawful, is it lawful to do good? And the answer is, of course it is. It's always lawful to do good. It's always right to do good, right? And so these Pharisees have schemed and created this um, a complicated scene here with Jesus uh, so that they could criticize him and um, tear him down. And Jesus says, look, the question isn't, should I do good or not? Should I do good? Right? I have an opportunity here in front of me, and I'm going to take it. He, uh, he shows them from the law of God that that is true. Right? If your animal fell into a pit, um, you, you weren't required to wait until the Sabbath was over in order to help that animal. And, and it'd be ridiculous not to help this man in the same type of situations. And so this man is in front of Jesus. Jesus doesn't uh, fret and wonder and, and worry about when the best time to help him is. Uh, he sees a need, and he's going to meet it. And he challenges these Pharisees uh, in their own heart, right? You see, G- dinner with Jesus is always more than just dinner. It's, it's not just an opportunity to advance himself. It's not just for his own entertainment. It's meaningful, purposeful love and care for those around him. Not to use them, not for some grand end or grand purpose, uh, but showing the love of God to those who are in front of him. Time and time again, he's stopped and he's moved with compassion to reach the needs of those that are in front of him. And so, who's in front of you? Again, not how did they get there, uh, not, not what have they done, not uh, what are they going to think if I, you know, am, are they going to think of, that I approve of this or approve of that? No, who's in front of you and, and, and how can I minister to them? How, how can I do good unto them? And that characterized the Lord Jesus Christ, who's described by Peter in Acts 10 as someone who went about doing good. I think another question that we ought to ask, and we'll end here with this question, not only who is in front of you, but also what is preventing you? Right, the Pharisees show such an interesting contrast to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me pull up that verse again. Um, here in verse number 7, it uh, says, And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms or the chief places or the chief seats. And uh, it's interesting to see how Jesus is, is, has eyes focused on this man who has a need. Meanwhile, The Pharisees are jockeying for position around this table so they can be in the very best of positions. Uh, We've talked in the past weeks about how Jesus ate his meals reclining, right? And that's why the woman last week had access to his feet. He's reclining. And these Pharisees are jockeying for the first or the prominent reclining place. That's the, where that, that word chief room or chief places or, uh, or most important, most honorable seat there, right? So the, these Pharisees show the opposite of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are blinded by ambition. They need the most important seat in order to advance themselves. What a contrast to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what prevents me from jumping in and meeting these needs? What prevents me from seeing these needs? What dulls my vision to the needs of others? Is it that I've structured my life to have no time? Is it that I have no margin uh, in my schedule in order to be flexible enough to take the time to minister to someone, to accept an invitation or extend an invitation? Am I too worried about my status? Am I uh, too worried about what others would think? Do I have these wrong ideas about um, you know, who God would have me to associate with and who God would have me to show love with. What are the things that are preventing me from doing what Jesus did here at this dinner where he reached out, he took this man, he healed him in spite of all the chaos around him, um, in, in spite of the critical eyes. Um, what is preventing me from acting as Jesus acted here in this dinner? I think those are some, some uh, moving questions, some things that uh, can bring us... Um, Uh, much contemplation in the days ahead. So discuss with your group. I've got some discussion questions in the description uh, for you to look at. And uh, so looking forward to hearing how the Lord is using this passage to challenge your heart and to take a look at who's in front of you and how you can best minister and do good to them. While at the same time, looking, being honest and challenging some of those obstacles that might be in my life. All right, well, God bless you and we'll see you next time.